Hey guys, so this week we're going to talk about something that I think is super important for all levels of sound skiing. If you're going around a set of boys or even if you're free skiing, it's really important to help you get wide on the boat and really feel the acceleration behind the boat, okay? So it's the pendulum effect. I want you to imagine that this is the pole and this is you as the skier. You put any heavy object on the end of a rope and it'll swing from side to side, accelerating through the bottom point, which is essentially the back of the boat, okay? So as we think about this, I want you to watch this video and notice that it's this exact same principle. It's just a heavy object on the end of a rope, swinging around and trying to use this principle to get me as high up on the boat as possible and accelerate into that first wake and use that swing to carry me up as far on the side of the boat as I possibly can while keeping that tight line. So why is this so important? In my opinion, it's because it hooks into absolutely everything in the sport. A lot of tips that you'll get told are all trying to get us swinging up on the side of the boat. And that's why I wanted to focus on it kind of as one of my early weeks was because everything that we talk about and a lot of things that your coaches will be telling you will be kind of hooking back into this idea. So how do we really get uh, the pendulum effect to really kind of help us through the course, help us get wide, help us get early? Some tips that I really like to focus on, and you've probably heard some of them before, is really making sure we're impatient at the finish of the turn. I see a lot of people really trying to rush kind of through this movement at the finish of the turn, and usually it happens with the shoulders. So they end up getting super shoulder heavy here, getting on a big pull at the finish of the turn, and then all that happens is, yes, we're on a fast line. Yes, we're on kind of a tight line, but either their position breaks down because they can't quite hold it, or they come off that second wake, they've managed to stay tall. As soon as we have to release through that edge change, again, everything breaks down. We lose that separation with the handle, the back shoulder comes up, and we end up putting a little bit of slack into that line, essentially, taking a line from nice and wide and using that swing to carry us all the way up on the side of the boat to just cutting it short, skin directly at that buoy. And we all know that adds too much speed at the buoy and we'll end up probably blowing the fin, popping a wheelie or other things like that. Another one is keeping those two hands on long after the second wake. And again, it comes back to that same idea that as soon as we release quick, we jump in, we jump into that line. We put a little bit of slack into that line again and we head directly for that boy again. So keeping those two hands on keeps that connection with the handle, it keeps that swing going, and it keeps us moving outbound. So a final tip that I find really useful is yes, we do have to be patient at the finish of the turn, but we have to make sure we're putting our own input, we're driving into that first wake as much as our position can allow, okay? So yes, I see a lot of people just kind of stood there and letting our position work, been really tall, setting a really good alignment, hits to the handle, everything perfect, but stood there expecting us that to do everything, okay? What I like to see is yes, hold that position, but start really feeling like we rotate into that weight with our hips. We're driving through that front foot. We're just putting in that little bit of our own input to get us accelerating into that first wake a little bit faster so we can really use that line and accelerate off that second wake and swing up on the side of the boat. If we don't get enough speed into the first wake, we almost know this, so then we have to pull long after that second wake and then we end up in speed in all the wrong places. So really focus on driving into that first wake and holding that position behind the boat so we can maximise that swing off the second wake. So thank you very much for watching this week's episode on the pendulum effect. I hope that you've learned something. And I just wanted to let you know that I've started a new YouTube channel under the name um, Rob Hazelwood. So if you'd like to go over, check it out, give me a subscribe. This video will be on here along with a few others coming. I've got a few content ideas planned for when this season kind of hits. So subscribe so you can keep up to date with all of that. But thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next week.